Third of December, Unity release. We have a date. Finally! Finally! We've got a date. How was that? Are we excited or did we manage to find one thing that they've missed from this lab that we will be upset about and miss the point, miss the forest for the trees? <laughs> Let's go. Hello, everyone. I'm telling you, we had a little bit of a delay. A little bit of a hectic start with IT. It's hard to find out when we start. But hello, everyone. Welcome, everyone. For now, for a new Akama Live, we're going to go back on the beta. As you can see today, we are multi. There's many of us today. We have many topics to talk about. Graph style with Lorco, who is the artistic director on the project. Also, we'll go on the pure technical aspect with Lorco, the client development side. And of course, you know, well, you know, the two of us, Riebeck and uh, assistant producer and me producer of the project. As I was saying, a live uh, that will be packed. There's loads of topics that we'll cover because the objective initially is to go back on the phase three that we've released about a few days ago. Plus, we want to announce everything that is coming in the future. The last live we've done, we've given you a calendar, a roadmap, that gives you sort of all of the modifications to come. Uh, and we have some more details for you, more things to tell you about. And we wanted to, well, with the Locos Presents, uh, go back on the artistic direction, characters, items. This was the perfect occasion to do a live and go back on things of this nature. I don't know if you had anything else to mention. No, no, no. That was a beautiful introduction. <laughs> it's going to be dance again as a live. We will do an in-game presentation to show you in more detail because clearly you've liked it last time. We've uh, listened to us and please do listen to us because towards the, the end of the live, it lasts around two hours. We're, we're hoping not to go over two hours and you've seen Lorco has made a joke about him already being freaked out about the length of it. <laughs> He's talking to IT. Are you able to switch scenes for us, please? Yep. Yeah. Right. This is the summary, right? Uh, this is the sauce you're going to be confronted with today. Confronted. So first of all, the evolution of the artistic direction throughout the entire beta. We'll go about. Uh, we'll go on every class except two, which are still in the work. But we'll go back on every single class and go back on top or over them and talk about them. The other thing we will discuss is faces. Uh, and put an emphasis on it. Second thing is idols. Uh, production side, integration, when you'll get it on the beta. And the third point is the upcoming modifications. We want to give you a calendar of from here until the end of the beta. We have presented a little bit in big lines what you can expect in the next few weeks in the previous live. But now we will talk about what you can see very shortly and the last weeks of next month as well. Starting from tomorrow as well, yeah, things you can expect starting tomorrow. And last, we will go back on the events of the beta because it was one of the things that were highly requested from the community. You wanted a beta that gives you goals that you go and achieve to sort of give us the opportunity to go back over the last uh, balancing sets. We know it. We want maps to be legible and readable. So this is why we have an event on the last phase of the beta and we'll talk to you about it later. When it comes to the artistic direction evolution, Oh, Rebek, do you want to say something? No, no, no. Let's talk about the various classes now and see what... Um, right, the time for Papino to find the slides that we are looking for. It has been about a month, a month and a half, that we progressively, throughout the beta, have modified some things cl in classes particularly. We're not necessarily talking about... Um, Specific points. It's the complete rework in general terms. There's many that have arrived that are already reworked. Some are still in the work. So for those of you who have missed it or have been disconnected at various points throughout the beta, we'll go back over the entire change things that happened from the start. He mentioned something about changes of PNGs and PCs. Oop, they're talking about cross now. People are asking for cross. Show us cross. Show us cross in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right, they're going to present 17 of the 19 classes that have been properly modified. The two that haven't been is the Akaflip and the Uginak. These are the old sprites that you see here at the top, and the bottom ones are the new ones. The other two, uh, Oginak or Ekeflip, are coming in a few days, uh, whereas others, they will be implemented in the game within the next few days, really. So, Lorco, if you want to tell us... Uh, the other ones, you know them very well because they're already integrated in the game. Right, to explain the process globally, what we're doing, we have prepared all classes for the beta, but there's still some things left to tweak. Uh, we will show you a handful of them. So, here, we have followed your feedback, we've listened to what you've said, and we've implemented it. The craft, for example, we've remodified uh, the general global aspect of clothing and you will see more detail in slides but you can already see a big difference uh, new shoulder pads details in clothing we've modified uh, feet uh, shoes because they were unsatisfactory which was the return that we've got they all looked uh, the same we still have some things to look over and these look um, these that you're looking at now are the first reworks after the convention when we started reworking things like that like Forgan Art and things like that um, so we will go back uh, over the first ones that we've started working on and continue enhancing them now that we have a good system to work with here on the Echo Flip you already know the class direction that we've taken the Eliotropes uh, Hopper Mage uh, th these are Eliotropes not Hopper Mages he got, he got it wrong We've added more details at the level of the hat and clothing detail. This has been generally the process or the direction that we followed is to go back and look for the level of detail that we used to have in 2.0 and before and bring that back to the current designs that we have. So it gave us the opportunity to go back on feet level. There's a lot of changes still to come, but we have made a first step. Because this was one of the biggest uh, pieces of feedback we've got was the size of the head. The proportions were off and we've gone back to a more standard head size uh, to remove the cartoonish side that you have got that we had before to have something that is more typically expected like the wings which were a bit low key. We've reworked them, uh, the facial expressions, the pupils, the eyes. We've added more details. As you can see now on the Ennies, they have full wings, larger size, because that was the edifying feature of an Ennie Ripsa. So we've looked over features, small details, but many more of them, like uh, shoes and things like that. Ennies are coming tomorrow. They're part of the classes that we will deliver starting from tomorrow. Here we have Ennutrophs, same. You'll, you'll get them tomorrow as well. Uh, on the female anutrophs, what have we modified here? Uh, the feedback is not evident on this one in particular, but there was low-key some more details on clothing, but not much. So you can see the bag, clothing, the belts um, have gained a lot more in detail which gives us great joy and great pleasure. The male anutroph, there's a lot of changes that happened are the level of the beard, the head size. Um, if you look at the third or fourth appearances on the list, you can clearly see a massive difference at the detail level. We've gone back to 2.0 kind of influence to go back and uh, enhance what we were working on at that time. So there are loads of modifications. We haven't said this as well, but there was the size of the Rebecca is saying the size of classes has been reworked because we used to have small classes and big ones like the Enutroph, Zello, and Oginex and others. So we have touched up. I think we've lost 10, but gained five in terms of uh, the discrepancy is big, but they're more scattered. The size differences are more scattered. So you get class dependent sizes we don't have no longer have the standard ones all of them the same. but as you can see there is already a clear difference and we're still working on this direction we continue to go back over every class and try and find areas of enhancement to bring out more detail and stuff like that uh, he's fighting uh, to find the tech to f make it big <laughs> he wants to make it larger but can't find the button for there it is <laughs> There it is, finally. We're better now.
Just to say, tech people also struggle with tech. So, this has been a long work, but it needed to be done because necessarily for an MMORPG, the first element that um, we want to identify and see ourselves in is classes, right? So this is why we wanted to put an emphasis on this. And also it was a feedback that was prominent that you guys given us a lot more. So for the Forge Lance, for example, loads of modifications. You see reflections of their clothing, uh, big shoulder pads because it was one of the, the defining features of the class. What is funny on the Forge Lance, Rebek is saying, the, when the class was designed, we had imagined it with a massive uh, shoulder pad, but in Flash we weren't able to do it, so we've minimized it into a smaller version. So we said, uh, so we said now that we have the tech for it, let's go back and bring that back. But I will, I will have to admit, the smaller version of it that we have now looks much more beautiful and more subtle. Uh, as we can see, there's a lot more contrast global volume, uh, shadows, there's a lot of details that are not necessarily clearly visible, but combined, they enhance the looks. These are classes that we have shown you, for example, like uh, um, Hopper Mages, details in clothing. These are small, minor changes, but that enhance the class massively. And it's something that we've implemented on every single one of the classes. And the objective and goal is to continue on this uh, trajectory and I can't remember exactly how many. Tomorrow you'll have five classes delivered on the beta, finished, ready, and two, uh, there's two missing, the uh, Osa Modus and the Uginak. We're working on both, it's not gonna take long, but even the Uginak, for example, maybe as, as far as next week, yeah, and the Osa Modus will follow shortly after that, so it won't be long. Effectively, the work that we're doing right now on the whole group of classes while trying to rebalance everything that we've already worked on uh, that's what we're doing we're focused on that 24 7 this is what we're working on monday uh, morning to evening that's our priority right now this is what we're working and you can already see the differences here the panda you can see we've added loads of detail in the clothing as well and it brings out the class a lot it works for the class so contrast as we've said little details hairlines here we will talk about this a bit later we have brought up the idea of making a skin context and now with all these changes we're more excited to see what you will concoct for us we've seen some topics on the forum where uh, the big topic was the before after skin and what we want to do is thank you very much for the feedback first of all but we want to play to that uh, to that aspect because we are we've done a lot of work and yeah we want to do an organic kind of event where you show us your skins what you found and it will happen on the beta i imagine and uh, we could possibly try and get you to uh, reproduce popular culture um characters and see what you do with those here again uh, the uh, rogue, you can see how the contrast here is very prominent, the differences that it brings the moment you change it. It brings out the rogue. The, the head side as well. The proportion of the head as well does make a difference. Here again, we haven't talked about this a lot, but it was one thing that was heavily criticized. The eight base faces looked a lot the same here we've reworked the kind and angrier ones so that they are different uh, you can see with the eye up and the sacri for example we've removed the pupils that were bothering you guys but these could be proposed on alternative faces so later on papino said later on you will be able to create a sac or an eye up with or without pupil you will have the option to do that but right now for this next delivery we're going to give it to you without and then you can decide what to do with it later it's not a radical change but it's something that you will have as a as a, as a customization tool over the long term for your characters they're reading chat and having a laugh at it the saddies for example uh, the pupil re rework. There's still some rework points that we will need to go back over and redo, uh, like hair on top of the boots. Uh, we will see. Th there are some things that we have in our radar that we'll go back and rework. Oh, the, the male sadi, come on, it's really cool, isn't it? <laughs> uh, 
Um, Lorco is saying I really like the Sadie look, yeah. I'm seeing a comment here on the chat. The Sadie has, has different musculature depending on which uh, class it is. So he's saying that some classes have more musk muscles and musculature than others to fit the idea and the lore of them. Here again, we've got loads of negative feedback, but that extrapolated a lot of things that were... All classes look the same because of the body size, right? When we put that one in place, uh, it helped us rework all of them very quickly. So, uh, as you can see here, the level of musculature has changed enormously. The details change from class to the other. It's not because we have one standard body skeletal that we can't do anything with it. That was just the delivering of phase one of the class with the first beta. So, but this this shift that uh, was criticized now allows us in a few weeks to change the the size of the body and thing like that. There is also a mistake that inserts itself when we talk about this uh, body. It's uh, uh, 2.0 for example, we had the same thing. We had to rework specific animations for every class, like animation class, spell class, they were all sort of the same, but it was really hard to produce one for everything. But it was generally the same kind of idea that we've done for Unity. We have a unique standard uh, skeletal body and we work the emotes, the animations on it. Oh my god, Foganauts, look at that. They've gotten their old baggy, <laughs> their old baggy uh, sh uh, pants. So cool, so freaking cool. We've also reviewed the elements of leather that were present in some aspects of their uh, kit. I'm ultra fan of this new relooking of uh, the Foganauts. So cool, so cool. Again, Papino saying, all the feedback that we've gotten from the forum during the beta have also nourished the direction we have taken. We were expecting to rework them, but we, we knew it was going to have to be done. We knew it was important to you, but this is the love that we have for these classes and your feedback has helped us bring this forward. It was more important than what we were expecting in the beginning, but... It brings us towards a result that is banger right now. So this rework has been necessary, absolutely necessary. As we've said, in 2.0, we had loads of modifications. Two, three, four modifications on every single class. Um, which is what got us what you know now in 2.0. So there's loads of iterations that were done at the very beginning between the beta and the uh, release of the game. Or maybe a little bit even afterwards, but oh my god, globally. There's a lot of work that has had to happen underneath for us to give you the render that you have now that you enjoy and are familiar with in 2.0. The mask is arriving tomorrow as well. So many modifications on the clothing, the uh, longer, uh, what would we call that, like the skirt for the uh, female... Uh, uh, mask the coming back the return of the sandals baggy sh uh, baggy trousers the contrast expressions as you can see there's loads because expressions in particular are important to this class details on clothing same for the male one as well we've gone on the elvis haircut <laughs> which was super class that people liked it was popular and we've reviewed the expression the dumb expression that it had the blank expression with wide open eyes we've reviewed that we've come back to it <laughs> as we said earlier more buffoon like uh, pants baggy uh, the little mask that it had at the level of the belt those very minuscule details that one put together Mwah. This was the last class that we had to show you. Because as I said, there's two missing, Uginax and Osa. We're working on them right now. But they will follow shortly. We also had, in the meantime, a few little assets to present to you. <laughs> a little... A little pass on items. Right, I'll let Lorco explain to us what they've done. Some very few assets on faces and then we do equipments. But we can talk about equipments quickly before. Right. Right. IT, please. Give us the... Right. On the equipments, as you can see, this is a slide that I've uh, put together like every other. Uh, really quickly, 
because we had loads of work to do. But here's here's what I'm, I want to illustrate here is the work process that we've talked about earlier. There's an entire forum post, a topic that talks just about before and after, right? So there's loads if you want to see more, right? Uh, and we still want your feedback. But here, here's the thing. Here's an example that I've taken. The tin rail hat, for example. We had something that was lacking a bit of craziness, a bit of zhuzh on the initial design. This is just an example, but we've reviewed uh, 300, maybe 500 individual items. Uh, I think in our change log we have uh, 500. Yeah, I think I'd put three or four times 150 item batch of items that we modified. We stopped counting. There's so many of them that we reworked. But here's an example of the uh, gobble shield on the right here. Uh, the shield was a bit too small, uh, misproportioned. Uh, and it gave the impression that it was not either not connected to the uh, character or fallen down or it wasn't quite right So here on the left you can see on this hybrid character that is wearing a cape that had uh, Lines, but you can see at the bottom they disconnect and things like that You can see on the sides the lines you had the shoulder pads on top of the shield you had um, um Hair that would get on top of the hat. We had some weird things happening generally that we've reworked and Looked at the details so that when you look at your characters clothes You can see the marriage the superposition of items shoulder pad hair item Everything sort of meshes better together one of the points that was heavily raised was the skin one We had one of the multiple five views that breaks uh, yeah, so the moment you switch views something breaks It's something that we've kept in mind and it has resulted in tons of uh, Correctives that we've done that we've passed and that we will continue to pass and I want to thank in particular people in the forum uh, like Pharaoh and uh, other people in the community that make loads of follow-backs and things like that tell us about the subjects even two three weeks after that they tell us this has evolved massively, we like this, this needs a bit more work and we sort of expect, thank you so much, we do expect, we love your feedback and please continue sending it our way. It's really cool that it allows us to validate because what we're thinking internally, is it in the right direction or is it not? So your feedback is superb in that direction. And sometimes we have absolutely no feedback. We change important things, but because nobody goes back on it and double check it, we don't know if you're happy or not with that. So the beta was exploded day one, so I'm not coming back to check it. So you see, it's incredibly cool. Thank you so much for those of you who uh, uh, keep giving us feedback and go back on top of it after we make the correctives and validate those for us, whether they have been successful or not, and give us more feedback. It, is, it pleases us so much. Last topic at the level of artistic direction faces It's not it's not a small topic. <laughs> I think on this very topic. We haven't been very good uh, communication wise we've uh, presented loads of uh, classes uh, Three weeks before two weeks before the beta opening. I can't remember exactly when but uh, around end of July something like that uh, we haven't put uh, to the fore something that would be changed later that wouldn't be finalized on the release and you had the reaction that you had but now you have a lot more customization but I will let Lorco talk about this yeah yeah big big topic we've presented prepared integral costumes and some of you had uh, seen that the costume uh, fry ghost costume or an eye op in an alternative costume so we have costumes that are thematic for example, the Lord Crow, the Black Crow one that already exists. We have class costumes that will be specific to classes like Sadida, Kra, whatever, yeah, every single class essentially. And we've uh, talked about the faces which will be specific to every single class. For example, here, we've put a little lineup of Kra faces, right? On the left, you have the eight faces that exist now on the creation interface. On the right, you can see the eight faces that will be available on the creation interface S more the these are additional faces that you will have so in total i think you'll have at least 12 and at the bottom here you can see four out of all the eight at the top will be available on a wow a um 
Whoa, <laughs> you'll be able to buy them with canvas from a new NPC called the hairdresser NPC. I don't know. 500 mil canvas each? I don't know. I don't know. They're making jokes. Maybe as long as it's under a billion, we think it's correct. They're making jokes. <laughs> There will be multiple ways for you to gain cosmetics and new looks, relooking. This, so, this is the customization, which was the objective, as Rebek said. We, the head, we've put a lot of emphasis on them early on, but we didn't communicate properly that this was going to be delivered later on, and that has resulted in disappointment. But now, on top, more so. Um, wow, holy shit. Uh, there's loads of classes, which means we had loads of faces to do per class times 19 So we had to push this project later on But as Loco said, the objective right now is that you have four additional new faces at the creation phase right now So at the level of You have four on the NPC and four extra at the creation So you can customize your face later on and it will develop throughout the time, weeks, months because um just in terms of roleplay, uh, customizing your character, uh, we think it is really cool for you to have these tracks to explore and yeah, it goes a long way. It goes a long way for you to be able to do that. It is really important. You had, you didn't have much by way of customization in terms of faces, whereas now it is going to be crazy the amount of detail you can go into. Uh, the other thing is uh, during fights, emotes, uh, facial expressions. What? The class is fecker. What? Sorry, that one, you didn't say that, I said that. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, these are expressions, like, uh, uh, new methods of expressions, like a bandana, little details that you will be able to add, on top of the facial expressions and the faces that you can see here. Naruto headband, that's so cool. Uh, don't say, this is it, it's done, everything is thought out, done, uh, 1000 all greens per face, no, 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 no. We have not yet worked out all the details, and that's why we prefer to give you from the start of the creation that you have four extra faces for free to play with, uh, customize, and toy around. We want this mechanic to be free and available to you from the start of your creation of character, and being able to supplement it later on by going to an NPC and supplementing that via cameras, by going to the shop, instead of going through the money shop. For those of you who are interested in testing these new faces, very shortly, uh, on the beta will be available uh, very certainly next week where you will have new slots at creation and you'll be able to play with these at the creation character okay I'm not going to commit to a date but it will it's arriving soon <laughs> as I said the return particularly on the pupils for the IOPS and Sakri if you want to bring back this feature to your character here it is it's some of the points that we're sort of working on to improve the customization so you can have more things to play with. We've added, as you can see, uh, the little barrette, I don't know what they're called, the hair bands, um, bandanas, stuff like that. These accessories that you will be able to add. My god, the eye up with the eye patch, it looks so good. It's awesome, it's so cool. <laughs> uh, you can see how far we've pushed the customization. On to the Sacris now. Sacris as well, there's so many uh, faces. Pupils, as you can see, without, with uh, little details that you find important, like the bandanas. Here again, all the faces on the right will be available on an NPC. Four of those will be integrated directly into the character creation interface, and four you'll be able to deal with an NPC. And this is the last one. There's a lot of others that are still in prep. We can't show you everything today, but it gives you a little idea about the direction we continue to follow this project and what you will have on the delivery a few days, weeks, whenever we release and eventually when the game releases you have a clear idea of what to expect. We will discuss date we will discuss about the dates later on, but it gives you the idea to the idea uh, that we're following in the artistic direction, the continuous betterment, the continuous enhancement. As we said, with the faces for example, we've showed you about the first half of the classes, there's still some left to do, but generally speaking, it is coming, it is coming very soon. And it shows you that we're working, we're working in the background, we're not, <laughs> at the moment, we're not slacking, we're not getting bored. <laughs> and, Rebek, to finish on this artistic direction, there's three little topics that I wanted to bring forth. The first one is, um, as you've seen, 
there will be loads of changes on existing faces and you have also seen it on the start of the phase third phase uh, the colors of characters from this fact from the uh, release oh, can we go back to the PowerPoint? Oh, yes, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> he, got, he scared him. He thought he said something he shouldn't know. So, existing character on the game, on legacy uh, servers, if we can call them like that. I don't know how we will call them <laughs> later on. But existing servers, today, you will be able to customize your character, change their colors, change their faces. The first time you will log in, you will be able to do all of that for free once the new, once Unity is released. On the new servers, of course, because you don't have any characters, but the existing ones, all characters that you have, the moment you log them for the first time, you'll be able to redo all of that theory crafting with faces and stuff like that. Um, in terms, there, there we will add some exceptions, like characters that have been made and not have more than three minutes of total gameplay. Uh, the objective is that you don't find yourself um, dragged by the old theory crafting of faces, looks and things like that. Uh, that will not benefit from the cool stuff. So, more slots of colors. Just in terms of skins, you will have more things to do. Uh, the logic that we had on items, slot-wise, has changed. And it's something that we will have, that we have discussed not very long ago with Lorco and other developers client side. Uh, we want to be able to give you, from the start of the creation, we want to give you items that are uh, camo. So you can see the impact of the colors you're picking on your characters on the future items you will be... We don't know what slots will change in what item. We can't predict all these things. So we're thinking of adding this as a feature from the creation, the character, so you can see the effect that it will have directly from that panel before you commit to a color. Second point was to talk about the cosmetic, um, the cosmetic, uh, what is it called, event. We don't have any more details, but it's still expected for next month. There will be one happening next month, and uh, it will be on the beta server. You'll be able to pick every cosmetic in the game. Um, it will be um, uh, also to see what you are able to cook. What, I want to see your beautiful skins, your creations, your creativity. Yeah the enhancements so we can also using that highlight the make you use the elements so that we see what things are not working well what things need reworking and things like that third and last point resolution in game lorco come on this is koto the pictos the resolution of the images behind the pictos the equipments spells resources some of them when you look at them they are a bit foggy they're a bit uh, what's the word uh, blurry uh, like the spell um, bar for example now as it stands is the pictos are small so we had to rescale them to increase the quality sometimes as big as 300 percent it is very promising at the moment we will have something that will be banger for you guys and i can't wait to show you the results Oh, we haven't talked about this in terms of characters as well. We can give you the recipe right now for characters. It is possible that we lacked anti-aliasing on characters and you can clearly see. I've spotted that on the new sprites. They look so much sharper around. So, um, we can't just do it blindly and we propose uh, things like that and the client will be a bit, uh, it doesn't work. But it is is we are adding a panel of graphical options for you to enhance your graphical experience or reduce it. So for those of you, um, for those of you who will have it on at all times, uh, you will have better definition, every pixel and things like that will be rescaled and the quality, uh, you will enjoy it so much more because it is now beautiful. Quote. So anti-aliasing for equipments and items, all these little things that we've added, uh, raising the... Um, the pack, the HD pack, all the HD pack things that pertain to this will make it for a much more beautiful and visible enhanced experience graphically. We've talked about this multiple times, uh, level design wise. Some maps have disappeared, uh, some um, images that we've lost completely over time. So it's a big package, it's a big work, but we're still working on it. It's not fun, I'm not gonna lie, trying to find an image in a big database. It's just crazy, but the goal is for us to give you the option at the release to have a banger graphic. I want to say this now. Um, oh, I have to say this right now. 
you need to hear this before the release i'm saying this right now we are delivering 90 to 95 percent of the pictos that will be fully reworked and up to specs and i'm not gonna lie you will get into buildings and see some blurry candles you will see some items elements somewhere that won't be i have to sell this to you so you cater to your experiences so we we've changed the way we work a lot over the years we've lost some files we're working things individually we are t we're not talking about 10 or 20 files we're talking about thousands and hundreds of thousands of files so i'm just gonna pass up on the details but it's a massive project but there will always be a hd pack at the delivery of unity but that very pack risks to not cover a hundred percent of the entirety of the game but i'm aiming with the team to reach a 90 percent minimum 95 percent Nevertheless, this also means on the bright side that we have gained massively in terms of quality and performance as well. It will be important to match the two because certain a lot of you have have noticed this on the third phase of the beta. When you change and then you go back on the map in the map on uh, the third phase, you notice that there's a lot of changes that happen. Uh, the loading of things, yeah. If everyone is using the same sets, for example, it takes a while to load everything up. So it's a subject that Koto and the development team is really working on and has something for you on the next week or few, next few weeks. It is not just a RAM issue. It is much bigger than that, as we've noticed. It is from the moment that we ask from the PC to show 400 characters and every one of the 400 characters, each one has four or five elements to show. So 400 times four elements to load everything at once and load everything that you had before. You could have 32, 64 gigs. It's not going to like it, your PC. <laughs> it's not going to like it. And here it's not just a RAM issue. It is a problematic uh, from optimization side from the uh, uh, elsewhere we have a lot of optimizations to work and it's part of the big topics that we are looking to enhance and better ourselves at that level but as you say creator mode historically was made to solve for this problem the option is still available on creator mode now in your current client but um, the objective is not for you to use it but yes there are options to make performance better but it's one of the topics that we continue to uh, develop our thoughts and enhance our ways of doing just to pick up on that question he's saying is we're talking just about client side this is nothing to do with the server side i'm going to use this moment to thank the develop the server side team that has passed a massive modification last week um uh, we can call it architecture of the server so that is multi-threaded and then we can uh, have crazy performances uh we yeah it's you're not even ready you're not even ready we call it tgv like turbo transfer whatever whatever <laughs> uh, we have upped our technology massively i don't want to uh yeah Rebecca is saying it we're good at this level but yeah uh, server side with the beta, we have uh, reached some crazy clean performance as Rebex said. We have uh, passed the multi-threading production side from the servers. Draconeros and other servers now benefit from it. For example, uh, Draconeros reached under 50 pings, which had never happened in its, its own history. When it reached under 200, we were happy. Right now, if you go to Draconeros, you see 50 ping and less, which was never the case, and it pleases us so much. For the end of year, it's going to give you a gaming quality that, honestly, I'm so looking for. It pleases me so much to have passed such a big thing. In the back. So, we've diverged a lot. There's still a lot of topics to cover. So, let's go back on the class idols. Rebek. On class idols, uh, we have been large, as if I can say, uh, in terms of the release days. Uh, because we have yet to analyze the uh, poll results. We had other technical difficulties. The... Koto resisted having this conversation, but it was present with the idols. <laughs> so we had the first version 
of class idols that works on our servers starting from yesterday or earlier this morning right so we have something functional for you and we've brought modifications we will continue to change them but they will arrive on the 31st of october right so for those of you who missed what it was uh is the fact of having an idol per class when it's not its turn to play inside the fight right knowing very well that i have evoked this in during the previous life the boxer attitude could be reworked I've talked to the animation team, but sadly it's a bit more complicated than I had in mind when I've mentioned that. Because all the spell animations are based on that one in particular. So if you change the boxer by lowering the hands, and the, you have to rework all animations. So they start for start with lower. The, yeah, there's a lot of technical difficulties in the background that we did not know about. So we've talked about the team for long term changes and things like that. But generally it will always be this animation that we will work on in the base for now. We have done a poll. I will show you some example. We're not going to go over all classes, but generally speaking, this is what we had. These were the three that we proposed. Every class had three options minimum that you could pick from, right? And you rank them from best to worst according to you. So for you, there were really good class uh, grades, but that weren't necessarily saying that we liked them. Uh, for example, Zello, for example, was retouched. You had the choice between the first and the third. It was quite tight. We liked the third one, but it had the inconvenience of hiding a lot more of what was happening in the background. So we found a hybrid solution between the first and the third one, where we've kept the... Um, um, We've put the uh, the dial in the hand and we've kept that element in the background and by mixing the two that you like the most Which were both solicited so we can please both sides on the Eliotrop um, th th This was clear and unanimous nearly three uh, Rank on the Elio the one on the complete left. So we said the other two didn't have much to them They did not make any they did not ruffle any feathers. They did not steer any water, but yeah, so you can clearly see that you have... Uh, we want to show you more of the ones that we've reworked from memory with uh, Sadi, Oogies... And there was another one, I can't remember exactly which one, but they have been reworked. So certain of them have been... Have been clearly chosen during the poll and we've kept them as such. The Iop, the Kra or the Shram, for example. These ones have not evolved much. We've done a little bit of a retake in some elements, but they've uh, practically not evolved uh, in relation to the poll because you guys were clear about what you like there. So we did not want to deviate from that. So this is the Shrams, Cross, and the Iops. Here again, there are some reworks that are being done and on the process of being done, but you can clearly see um, starting from next week, you will see the reworks that we've done, uh, the little tweaks, the little modifications, the little corrections for it to be really pixel perfect and up to speed with our plugin. Next modifications to transition. What are the biggest modifications that are arriving on the 24th? Loads of things. Holy smokes. This is all coming tomorrow. All right. Hear me out. Hear me out. Koto has worked for two weeks on this. <laughs> it did not work on his own, it worked as part of the team, but they have not stopped uh, coordinating with the server team, and this is all arriving tomorrow. For all of you who were so looking forward to test this, it is coming tomorrow. So, let's go from the list top. Auto join. As you can see here on the right, on the little picture, hold on. When a character joins a fight, so we have auto follow, auto join, when the leader starts a fight, you join immediately. Auto focus, it means bringing the client that is playing or whose turn it is to the front without you having to make a single click, right? Uh, next one, the third one is auto follow, which is based on the group leader really. So when the leader of my group starts walking, I can uh, click auto follow and then my character will just follow it. And similarly, all of the whole thing is based on following the group leader. And as we've said, both of them are cumulable or you can put them all in tandem with other options. So all these functionalities really work well for multi-accounts. And when you're playing with someone, you don't want to click ready every time you join. Uh, characters join automatically, move to the map automatically, start and go start immediately. Uh, when the uh, first character presses start. So, 
sometimes you will need to use Alta, for example, with NPCs to use Haven bags for mobile. But mobility, you will never need it again. As we've said earlier, the three options: Auto Join, Auto Follow, Auto Ready will be. Uh, you can uh, select and play with the parameters from your settings and you can see if others have it uh, link have uh, used those options or not but 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 the bring the client to the fore is an option that is not inside of the settings it's uh, client wise you have to activate it or deactivate the other cool thing is you can see uh, on the taskbar you will be able to add uh, little pictos uh, for classes that you're playing, like you can see the Fekka there is highlighted, you have an Osa, you can see which of your characters you have, and you can activate it, deactivate it of course, and of course the uh, GPS, we've mentioned this, You we've talked about it before in the last live, it is intrinsically linked to auto follow. If, yeah, we couldn't do auto follow without uh, auto GPS for all. And that's why we have brought that as a permanent feature for everyone to facilitate the implementation implementation of that. And you guys have liked it. So as I've said, it will be free. It will be available for all subscribed accounts that are level 10 or more. As I said, the option, the auto follow will only work as well if you're subscribed and level 10 because it uses the GPS feature to follow. And a question that has popped up a lot. What will happen with... Um, uh, with uh, the actual potions that exist now, what will happen? There will be a dev blog that we will post at the end of today or tomorrow latest. It is divided in two parts. The first one is to show you the new functioning of uh, the compensations that you can expect. I've looked... I've seen React summaries of the last live and maybe we weren't explicit enough, but there will always be candies that give you bonuses. We don't have any other system, incredible systems or novel systems to compensate you. It will always be that, but the functioning of these uh, candies and bonuses that will be attributed will be reworked. They will be more interesting. They will be better and enhance your gameplay. Uh, you will see all of this in the dev blog, of course. This is just to warn you. Yes, it will still be based on a consumable uh, kind of idea that will give you a bonus, but the bonus will be changed and cha enhanced. So, yeah. Yeah. This is the way we found out of how to. As Rebek said at the level of the candies, don't think it's just prospection candy on some. We've reviewed the entire system for you to have bonuses, uh, new bonuses that will be interesting. We've given you some examples about, uh, uh, you know, like generate 50% more uh, colo tokens for an hour or two. If you optimize these bonuses, you will make more commas than the potion was worth on the servers. That's the point that we've made for it. So, we've mentioned this last time. The other big change that will be coming is the spell interface that will be arriving tomorrow in the game for you to test and see. We've mentioned it during the last live, of course. I don't want to go too much into detail into this, but it is the return of the double column um, display so you will have the two existing ones the previous one and this new one that will be added uh for those of you who want a bit of a change we've changed the de-locking of the spells uh how you see the variants and the big novelty is the filters that you can see here on the right interface so here for example this will be more solicited for people who are level 200 and have all their spells de-locked they will have a, a page where they have all their spells looking and uh, right left like the previous interface but also with new little filters to show you uh, spells much easier so if you're looking for air spells you can just bring all of them uh, movement malice uh, debuff stuff like that and other modification that i need another modification or the interface options so what we've done here is we've added a new feature uh, it's a facet of something that we've evoked last time. It allows you to to delete, add, or save presets of interfaces. For example, uh, you can make it vertical, horizontal. You can save that. So you can apply that display on top of it. And behind it, you will be able to switch between templates. So you can, this is saved on your PC. So you can do it once and you can apply it to all accounts. So you can have the same 
display without having to restart or anything. We have a little button for refresh that you can see here, refresh button. So for example, in a new account, you create a new template for fights or farm or whatever. You can just save that in your computer and then go to the other accounts and then just upload it and that's it. And then you can have a preset for fight, a preset for outside and you can save them. So the moment you get into a fight, it automatically loads your fight preset. Um, and it juggles automatically once you do all the setup and work in the background. So in this template, for example, you can see the interface positioning, the interface position, the size of everything, and other new options that are saved in this template right here. For example, no examples. I can give you the list if you want, but the button size, the color of the buttons and in the interfaces, the P the exact positioning of the gauges, whether you want the HP bar to be left, right, top, but all the options that are linked to uh, display and nothing to do with gameplay. Yeah, anything that is rendu of the interfaces, so the rendering of the UI, the interfaces. So the options are saved on your PC and not on your account. So via the template that we've added, if I can say it like that, the normal template, if you don't go through templates, the options will still be shared uh, between accounts. Uh, this is delivery that we're talking about for tomorrow, but there are other timings that we still have loads of things to bring to you. For example, 31st of October, big topic that is coming. Class change, sex change, and name. These three changes without having to disconnect and reconnect. Ooh. So if, if the video wants to play, hold on. Close your eyes and imagine that you don't have to disconnect to change class. That's exactly what it is. The video did not want to play. <laughs> Essentially, the moment you consume a color change potion, a name change potion, uh, you arrive directly on the page that lets you change, right? Same for all of these parameters that we've mentioned. Uh, there's an interface, interface where you change your name, your class, whatever, whatever. And there will be modifications on the functioning of all of this. So when you have a class change, for example, now, you were able to change sex, color, and face with a class, and now we've added the name as well so that you can change, so it matches better with your other classes or whatever, however you want to call your character. Oh yes, puppy knows exclamation. Uh, how do you want to call yourself? Oh, we haven't listed this, but we are reworking all the conditions on what we call the name checker, the nameage, how, the parameters, the rules, and everything that dictates what you can and cannot name. We have honored so much rubbish in there. We've deleted a lot of them. I think we have deleted about 1,000 or 1,100 parameters. We were fed up of them. Like, uh, uh, it will be more permissive, like accents are coming back, some terms, some words, things that we don't want to see in game will never be available. But generally speaking, the naming will be more flexible. Yeah. It was a system that was uh, checking the letter, uh, the letter ranking. If you had a letter that came after another, one. for example, uh, gem, I love. So magma, for example, would not work. Um, yeah, th th there were some. Un a lot of you were so fed up and upset because you've realized the difficulties with. Uh, with naming, we couldn't deal with this shit anymore, so that the random generation, uh, sometimes you would randomly generate a name, and you'd click OK and it would tell you you can't have this, so there's a lot of craziness that was happening in the background, but this change allowed us to better ourselves on this, and I've seen the question on chat, uh, there will not be a comeback of the Cyrillic uh, alphabet. We will not be verifying the ends of words or letter sequence and things like that, but there will be things that will stay now, like character succession. You will not be able to put a thousand dash on your name. Uh, and if everything works well, because uh, I'm seeing the question in chat, maybe, maybe there will be spaces in pseudos. It's not fully done now, client side. It, client side, we are not big fans of what it looks like, but... Uh,
Yeah, we found a difficulty. There's little problematics uh, to do with it. We have experts on the topic, but there's a possibility of... Uh, we'll see if we are able to bring you... Uh, Rebecca and the devs, you know, we know that adding spaces in this type of variable, we don't like it at all. We will see how feasible it is. It's not guaranteed at all, but it is a desire that we have internally to bring you uh, in terms of customization for names. Yeah, yeah. It's a solution that, it's the base solution that we might privilege, but we still have other problematics that we're trying to solve. But generally, at the level of the pseudos, the names, there's uh, a lot of changes that will arrive at the same time uh, as the change of name classes that you'll be able to do immediately without having to disconnect and reconnect which will be a big breath of fresh air and you'll be able to test this on the beta as well so if you want to do a different kind of stuff gearing you'll be able to just change class very rapidly and all yeah. topic that was heavily debated which is the interface header this thing right here we didn't want it, you didn't want it, but now you have the option to show or hide the header. So you can have uh, remove the name, uh, slim down the top of the bar. These are things that are arriving on the 31st of October as well. And uh, again, this is parameterable. You will be able to change these things on your interface settings that we've mentioned before. Save them, port them, share them. But as you know, uh, a big thing that pertains to 2.0 was the burger menu, the three uh, points that allowed you to change the position of the header. It's sadly one of the constraints that we had to keep for you to have the interfaces without it. But it will allow us to aerate and create more space with the interfaces so you can create more space and have better interfaces. And this is coming on the 31st. Rebek is uh, interjecting. He's picking up a question from chat. I am certainly, I'm certain that we will have this for a billion times in the forum. The template sharing. I've asked the question 20 minutes before we started the live. The answer is no. You won't be able to share them now. And I insist on actually, right now, it's not possible. But on this version right here, on the template versions that we've worked on, we have a big security problem. If we authorize the share with freely share, it only needs one person to send you a malicious file. You open it and then it, it doesn't change your template and it ruins your PC. So we try not to push this as a feature forward to not enable this kind of behavior. But I don't doubt that people who look will find how to do it. But it's at your risk and peril. If somebody sends you a file, please don't just, if it's a zip, please don't just open it. If you're not sure of the provenance of it, don't just open it and install it on your PC. But we would have loved for, for this version to have a uh, share. But security wise, it's a very touchy topic. And maybe next year we will try and find a solution towards that. But for this version, there will be no sharing. Uh, you can already share a file that will do what we're talking about. Well, we won't tell you which file exactly. So it's just a security uh, consideration. We don't want to give out the tools and push it forward for people to use it and make problems for us and for you. Yeah, it's more of a political decision rather than a technical thing. It is a desire for us that we want to bring to you. It will happen eventually. Uh, but we will see the forum post that we can imagine the forum post that had theory crafted the position size and everything for fights outside that will make things better for it but basically we don't want you to modify client file share them and other insult them this is client file modification and we don't want that to happen or make that more easy for you guys and because of all the problems that will come with it we will communicate to you things like that if it's something that will come in the future. But right now, the delivery of the feature is not happening anytime soon. Next thing, we talked about the 31st of October. We have a calendar. It is the beta, but there's loads of things happening. 31st of October, we will finish on the interfaces and we move on to a big timing. 
uh, I've seen the question uh, pass by a lot. Um, I'm pre-shotting this. I should have mentioned this an hour ago. Uh, I'm not really pre-shotting, but it's the time to talk about it. Let's talk about balancing. So on this live right here, as you can see, uh, during the last live, there was, uh, on the 7th November, many modifications, balancing, uh, that will happen. Many, many, many ones that will come with the Unity release itself. But they will be talked about in a future live, before the 7th of November, right? For this one in particular, we will present to you just the modifications, um, client-side features, and we sort of benefit from Koto's presence here with us to show you for the 7th of November one of the latest functionalities that was brilliant, that we haven't implemented yet, but will be coming soon. It's the enhanced statistic at the end of a fight. We've mentioned during the 7th of October there will be a retake of the characteristic. I don't have any visual to show you for the characteristic tab, but for the 7th of November, for the statistics of end of fight, there will be a third tab that will finally be accessible and you will get into so much detail for the character. You will get into depth about many of the things. We've mentioned this, I think we've uh, covered this in a poll. Whether you wanted this in PvP and for most of you said yes. So we're bringing this level of detail to you in PvM and PvP by character, by uh, sidekick. There's a lot of stats that will be arriving, it will be condensed, but you will be able to enlarge whichever one you're more interested in, as opposed to any other one. So we've pushed this forward, uh, just to bring a little bit of rivalry between uh, teams, so that you can see what is the biggest value per team, per line, so there's a lot of stats that will count. The number of uh, killed mobs, damage received, shields given, shields received, AP, MP used, erosion. God, you will have loads of interesting stats for you to find and get creative and competitive. In PvP, PvM, you'll have both teams that will be presented and you can compare all of that. Oh, number of, number of failed challenges is a stat that will be there. <laughs> We, we are thinking of adding the number of XP that was missed because of that challenge failed. But we're thinking about adding that, but we're not sure it's healthy to add that. <laughs> there's a lot of details that we brought here, but in theory, there's a lot more stats. We haven't showed you everything so that it's not an Excel sheet in this interface. But we're really thinking with what we've done, we have sort of summarize the most interesting stats that you might be interested in. Anyway, to globally finish, we want to go back on the beta event. So you have more of an idea. It is something that was, it's a request that was brought to us a lot from you guys. And for the third phase event, it will be slightly different from the previous one. What will happen is, we've talked about it during the last live, which was, we didn't give you all the details, but for a three week period, on the beta phase 3, from the 7th of November, which is the date where the latest, the biggest modification will arrive until the 28th of November, if you're interested, of course, it's optional like all the events in the beta, you will be able to come there and try and win some rewards. The objective, as we said, is for you to test classes, test balancing of uh, equipments, because there's loads arriving for the 7th of November, uh, testing uh, the debugging of those new functionalities that we've added for those of you who... Uh, uh, who have not relaunched the client from the first week. And there's also big work on the maps, the legibility of dungeons, high level dungeons, maps, and things like that. So this is special to this event right here. What will happen is for those of you who are interested, there will be an event where you will be able to uh, win level dungeons level 190 and above. So 190 and plus, about 37 dungeons by groups of three or less one to three maximum, where you will have to go and do these dungeons and unlock some achievements if you do that. If you do that, you will win better tons, right? Better tokens. And at the end of the event, you will have rewards that you'll be able to buy with these tokens. So as you say, with 30 better, if you unlock 30 tokens, you will get this t token and 80 better tokens, you will unlock this um, pets mount. So the only way to get these on the new server, 
is to do these events because the ones you already have will not be ported to the new servers. So this is the event we're proposing to you. If you want to get a head start and have this really cool pets mount on the new servers, this is your opportunity to get it because not all dungeons will give you the same amount of better tokens. Um, so for example, you won't get the same tokens from a Cthulhu and the Servitude. I've just picked two at random, you know. Uh, but the, that's the idea, generally. Why three? Because... If we said, if, because if uh, we said four or more, then we are introducing a power leveling mechanic where somebody pays 500 mil to someone in Helmina and then they power level them or uh, leech them through that. So we've made it as challenging as possible that people in the fight have to do something, have to actively participate. But of course, if you have people that manage soloing, if you try and do commerce, we don't mind you doing it, we're, we're okay with you doing it, but we caution you against doing that, we, we, we ask you not to do it, please. <laughs> uh, as you know, better free loot, so you can level as many characters as you want to level 200, you have all the gear, you have all the ma magin, you have no bottlenecks in this server, so you'll be able to theory craft everything that you want, all the characters you want, with the characters, with the gear and stuff like that. All you have to have is that you be subscribed but it's a matter of a few clicks as we said we've made the focus on level 190 to 200 because we want to get feedback on these dungeons it's not the shortest dungeons to do and on the better if there's not something for you to win it's not necessarily the most interesting to do so there will be a section on the forum dedicated for this bit right here so you can share your feedback with us on uh, legibility of maps and I'm thinking of J in particular uh, the grid the maps, the obstacles, the uh, holes, uh, lines between cells and things like that. So I think we've covered everything. We've covered everything here. We've said everything. Are we sure we've covered everything? Uh, was there a slide left? I have a little doubt. I'm not entirely certain. Ah, oh, come on. Let's give you the date. We know you want to give us your dates. So we will... Let's go! The release is the 3rd of December. We give you the date. Go and book your holidays. Go and book your... Let's go! You were not very far off. We put it there for security. It could have been the 10th, but no. The release will be the final port in. The release will be the 3rd of December. As Rebeck said, there will be a beta that is ending around the 28th for a release on the week after. We'll come back to you with more details about pre-inscription, you know, uh, pre, uh, what is it called, the um, pre-registration, -regis whatever it's called. But yeah, the 5th of November, we will do a massive live. 5th of November? No! We'll talk about pre-registering, we'll talk about the shields, we'll talk about the modifications that we've done for the new servers, we'll talk about balancing, uh, we will talk about the events. We have loads of things for the new event. I think that whole month, there's loads of things in preparation for the release. We're so hyped for this. We're so looking forward to it. Yeah, we will have to prepare a big moment of availability for this live because we'll have loads of things to talk about. Right, um, I am counting on our content creator creators to make good recaps of this live and the one to come because they're so meaty but yeah generally 5th of november we give you a rendezvous because essentially you have seen for this live you have seen the amount of things that we have enhanced we have bettered we're also producing things for the end of the year that you're not seeing at all there's loads of things that are cooking in the background that we are looking forward to show you everything but we want to keep some things in uh, in stock and we give you when we're ready to give you but yeah we are gunning for a massive banger release on the 3rd of December. We are so excited for it, but we're adequately nervous and preparing. There's a lot of work. It's not done. We haven't finished. It's just the beginning. Because we're talking about the release on the 3rd of December. But on the future, we are already thinking about next year's content. All the crazy things we want to create with the Crosmos. Uh, we started working this with uh, the content of the convention stand, you know, like uh, the heavy stuff we're working on, the gladiatorial, the special fights. Uh, those are test cases and the basis for newer content that we want to bring you, we want to propose to you next year. 
the only problematic, the real problematic that I have for me, you know this game side, we will open mono account and multi account. S I'm so conflicted whether I play mono or multi account in the end of the year because of the organomic changes in multi account. Oh, this is my, my heart, my multi account and heart is ripping in two sides now, not knowing which one to go for. <laughs> Here, I wanted to specify Reback is saying on the, uh, the 3rd of December is the date of the publication and release of the Unity client and also the opening of the new server for everyone will be on Unity on the 3rd. The existing servers will go on the new client. The new servers will be open. And this is why we've done the second phase of the beta, beta where we looked over all these little details. And it's also the same moment where you will have access to the new servers you can it will very probably be multiple mono multi-account servers to propose. And as we've said, we will talk to you about this in a few weeks, but there's an enormous number of hype and things that are coming with this release. We're not, we're not on the Temporis kind of hype or content, but we are going to do some cool events that will last for weeks and weeks and weeks and it will be very cool and this is why we have uh, we will open multiple servers of every type so the december uh, 3 30 4 p.m let's say for the opening honestly uh to tell you this right now it's difficult if we go on uh, the sort of hours that we aim for generally it will be three 3.30 or 4. If we open after 5 p.m. it will be panic internally. If it doesn't go well, we will be struggling. We will be adding the hours. But generally, as we said for the last temporises, 3, 3.30 as an expected release day on the 3rd of December. And that is the experience we've had on the last openings is uh, globally they've worked well. And I'm really, I don't want to guarantee anything, but I'm really hoping that the better release uh, worked, it was big, the number of hours we worked, client side, server side, all the optimizations we've added, and we still managed to meet the deadlines. Everything works well. We've passed them last week. It works now. It works very well, yeah. So, generally, if everything goes well, we will open towards the early afternoon, but to give you an hour right now, it's not possible, it's not possible. <laughs> we can't do that. <laughs> And to jinx ourselves like that for the lol, no, no, no. Uh, the char the lol character jinx making a joke with chat. I don't know what that was about. And yes, uh, we wanted to communicate things to you because you wanted to book your holidays. Lots of you asked us for dates. <clears throat> At the start, we wanted to announce it in two weeks, and we've said, but for some of you guys to put two or three days vacation, uh, it's too short, so we've wanted to communicate as early as possible for you to know when it is happening. Cool. I'm so happy to have announced that and get out of the way. Tomorrow, there will be class changes tomorrow, like someone uh, have mentioned, the last two classes that were missing, Zelor and Ekaflip. I've also noted many questions that were um, a player that made a forum post where he invited other uh, players to put their questions to pre-shot the live. I found, I love the exercise because it saves us having to look at the current chat and look at the screen and see what the questions are and miss loads of good ones. So I've selected questions like at around 10 from that forum post and I'll try and answer them very quickly. So the first one is worries about new houses and uh, paddocks. There will be modifications that will come on the 5th of December. We will measure. Guilds, loads of things are changing. We're not telling anything about that. Question about the revalorization of uh, percep perceptor resources. For now, not expected to touch it or anything. We have some modifications on recipes, but I don't think the rare protector resources are going to be changed or anything. The, we've talked about the stance animation, the boxer. Um, for those of you who want to stay on classical servers towards the end of the year, uh, your ensembles will be saved for the, for the porting for the 3rd of December, we can say the date now. Your ensembles, as they are right now, will also be ported with the big... The theme, sharing, we've already talked about it. There was a panda question. The chaining of actions on panda or not fluid. As I mentioned during the last live, uh, we still have some uh, modifications to bring. Um, with some classes in particular where they don't chain very well. 
we're very well aware that Panda is part of some of the classes that are the least fluent to play generally. Well, I'm 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 chaining. I'm chaining. I'm I'm seeing that chat is uh, saying we have changed some recipes, like two or three. We've changed thousands, and I wanted to emphasize that. We'll talk about recipes and everything in more detail. I'm in speed mode, I'm chaining. There was another question about your time of play, which is a question that keeps coming back and back and back about Unity. I know that people are talking about this question a lot in Wakfu uh, at the current time. In all transparency, it's not a question that we've worked on. It's still very complicated to find a balance between players that f play very quickly and players that take time. How does it work in group settings and things like that? My God. I don't have any information to share to you right now. And in the immediate time, we haven't prepared our plans to talk about it. Other questions on the optimization of client to come. Here, I'll turn to Koto because, of course, <laughs> generally speaking, the last few weeks, we were uh, retaking, redoing the interfaces, the last three touches. On the last six weeks, he w it was about to leave because, <laughs> generally speaking, and in concrete terms, we've done all the last pre-tests, last touches, uh, focuses, last focuses of optimizations and things like that. Uh, because we know there will be a lot of characters on maps. Why, why is not working right now? To enhance it and better it. We needed to get loads of people in one place. So RAM keeps creeping up. Leaks. We're still continuing to look what doesn't work. And we've spotted that big problem of uh, map changes. What happens? What goes wrong when you change maps? That it lags a little bit. But we're working on it. As we've said during the last lives, the beta phase 3 is for that, debugging and so on. Quests. Have you planned to change any sort of quest sequences or quest fights or things like that? Yes, we have gone on some quests like uh, the uh, Lurgy and some effects that are just disgusting in quests that hinder your gameplay. We're not going to say we're going to completely uh, delete it, but we're going to nerf them massively. We're w going over some of these effects to reduce their impact, to better your gameplay and keep it fluid. Other, other one, uh, around the world, the quest, doing the blob dungeon four times. We were fed up of you having to do it. We've changed it. It was a much bigger change than we expected to do at the start when we've started. Oh, we will talk, we'll give you more details on the 5th of November. Let's not, let's not mention any more. Just in the meantime, I've noticed a question about optimization multi-account on Mac. Normally it works. There's a little bit of a difference between Windows and Mac, but it works. Well, Linux, we haven't really started the topic. This was not, this will not be natively ready on Linux. Uh, so it's a bit more complicated to put in place. There's another question that was uh, the memory leak vis-a-vis -vis memory leak If you create 300 objects and your language does even if your language does not allow for memory leak in the RAM for people who are interested in this very technical question if you create 300 items and you don't delete them they stay there regardless of which language you've programmed it's not language dependent I've seen a question on chat about better, better tokens. They will be linked to the character, not to your account. Because it, you just take one character and do your need us and repeat and then give them to your character. So for, char for characters on free loot server number two, you're so few of you. So we're going to close free loot server two tomorrow so that everybody would be on free loot one. Uh, in part because we want all the people to be on the same server to test all the optimizations, the performance, when we have loads of people. So we're pushing you all to be in the same place. For those of you who have seen the dev blog about the... Oh, the, consu the new consumables that we've introduced, the Compass, comp compass tokens. On this dev blog that we've already published, there will be things. If you see some things that won't be enhanced on bonuses, some things that are OP, well, even I imagine you won't be mentioning it if it's too interesting. But don't hesitate to give us your returns on the dev blog so we can adjust things for you and so that you don't find these candies or consumables are just rotten every time we give you them, you're disappointed. We want them to be interested for, for you as well. Last point. I don't want to get too much into detail, but because 
We want to keep some secrecy. There were loads of questions about the report and data from the reporting system. Just to tell you, there were loads of reports from the start. There's, I can tell you, I think. Um, it's not critical to tell you. But there was 200,000 reports since the release of the, the feature in September. 128,000 of them or about bots. Whoa! Cheating, generally. Generally, the other ones were uh, off charts or other things. 25% globally, just grosso modo. For those of you who are asking the question, there's a bit less than the reports who have been processed and the vast majority of the reports were approved. Just like that. It's around 95% of the reports that have been done, that we've processed, have been approved. Thank you, thank you all. All of you have made quality reports uh, that allowed us to ban people. Your scores have evolved massively and visibly and probably uh, in a positive way because most of them are quality. Thank you all for those of you who have reported and thanks to the moderators who have worked on these reports, processed them. Yep, that was the last point that I wanted to evoke. I'm seeing the question of organizer directly into the client. Koto. <laughs> I think it was as late as uh, as recent as yesterday or earlier this morning wanted to see if we could add a little shortcut to navigate between uh, uh, between uh, windows we will see what we can do if you put we want to see if you click uh, control a or a you go or a button that lets you navigate between characters instead of having to click alt escape or alt tab it's just a sort of track that we're following to see if we can make it work there's a lot of topics that are uh, piling up we need to see how long it will take to implement is it something that we can just quickly put together and uh, deliver in the next few weeks or is it something that we will look to deliver on the 3rd of December I can't really tell you with any degree of exactitude but it could be one of the most interesting functionalities to add in the last to sort of tie the multi account and optimization together without you having to use any external tool whatsoever and yeah and it solves the problem of talking to many NPCs on multi-accounts. You can just A, B, C, click, 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 click. And the question was uh, coming back during the live multiple times about the availability of the HD pack. A big pack of the HD pack is predicted or designed to arrive for the 3rd of December. The porting of the Unity client, right? So 90 to 95% of the pictures will be available. So maps... Uh, will be beautiful, will be high quality, as you would expect, right? But what will need to be done on the next 5% that is missing to 10% will arrive in the next few weeks because we will have to do them individually, manually. It's something that will happen with the game's release. It will not happen. You won't have 100% of the game on release, but it's something that will be available to you at the start of the 3rd of December. At the level of the weight, we can't really say. We haven't done a test with the whole design or the whole package that you're ready to deliver to see how much the final weight is. Let's say that we export every picto four times much bigger. <laughs> and then it whips out a dragoon to show you the difference between this. <laughs> no, no, it's not gonna be like that. But generally, the quality has been multiplied by four. And the size has to follow as well. So it makes the client heavier as a base rule. And uh, I don't know exactly what the size, uh, final size is and what the impact it will have on map changes. We have to stay very vigilant on, um, if you have pictures that are four times much bigger, we have to see every time you need to load them when you change maps and areas. Oh, we have to think about these things. I don't want to try and guess and just give you a number just to please you. We're not going to say anything. We don't have the answer. No, let's not go back on interfaces. It's not fun. Oh, somebody is mentioning Eternaris and the new interface. Yeah. Uh, Eternaris has started working with us. One week and a half, two weeks now. Time flies by. Wow. <laughs> so, his mission has started. He started working. And right now, as it stands, some passes have been done on the interface. We're retesting others, and we're currently working and reworking on the default theme 
to possibly add green where we have uh, uh, sort of brown orangey buttons we will see to try and retrieve get back the old dofus that we had the old interfaces that we had there will be a big rework that will be done on the selection the server selection for example we want to have the coming back of the illustrations the pictos of servers something that we'd really love to get back so these are getting reworked now and these will be arriving for the third you will not see them in the beta but the moment unity launches you will see all that crazy good stuff i will not say never but it's something that i expect you will see on the third and the bigger part of his uh, mission with us as a ui designer will be more for march april of the next year there's a big part um to be redone completely rework but we can't redo all the interfaces right now uh i think it would be damaging for the project and it would harm the prospect of release of the third so we have things that are getting on top of each other piling up but we don't want a piece to affect everything that we've already done so that we have to redo the work again and make it integrate so we're not going to touch that so we postpone the entire bulk of the ui rework and everything for march april next year I've seen a big question about the what the black bands on white screens, maybe on the sides. I don't know exactly. Uh, we could go back on that and look at the forum post. And the other thing is, okay. So, so there were I don't know what the name of this item, bluffer and pledges. There were uh, slots that you would be able to equip on the arm in Dofus Two, and now we've replaced that with an integral costume. Whereas it has come back to me by saying, look, on the freeze, when you unlock it, it's one of the first rewards. I don't know why he's talking about it. Uh, the costume, a little piece of cosmetic to, that was insignificant. It was uh, weird. So there was this worry. And the second worry was that uh, because we've expected loads of, and we've talked to you about this, loads of integral costumes per character and others, uh, uh, echo flip with dashes and things like that so that we had a little bit of a constraint in order to equip costumes you have to make them integral so the plagiarist whatever it is it, it goes against this whole new way of uh, doing things so we've decided to remove them completely from the um, the brassard uh, uh, like the captain band but we've completely removed them yeah, so some of you will see this as a downgrade, but we don't have much choice at this level because of the direct. Can you guarantee that there will be never any fusion between existing and new servers? Never. We can't say that. Uh, every time we say never, we regret stuff like that in the next few years. First year, yes, I can guarantee that will not be. If there is a fusion of the old and the new servers, it will be at the time where... It will only happen at a time where the new servers are so well established that it won't have a negative impact of fusion. To say never, 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 I can't say that. But you can say for the next entire of next year, I can certainly say there will not be a fusion. But in maybe in five years more, I can't say that. Again, if the both economies are mature, to not fuse them, eh, why not? Why not? If we talk about uh, time scales in the future, a minimal uh, time scales in my mind is five years plus for a few. Maybe for priority, we might fuse equivalent servers. And here we talk in cases where really there isn't enough uh, players on one unique multi account and unique multi new one. So these are extreme cases. If there's people, if the populations are stable or growing, I don't want to say never, but again, this is what we're thinking. I've noted many questions again. Questions again about uh, pioneer achievements on the new servers. Everything that is new servers, we'll talk to you about it on the 5th. Uh, server fusion, we just talked about it now. For those of you who keep asking yourself the question, Al Halloween, I've seen it. It's next Tuesday. On the question of the names of the new server, we will talk to you about it on the 5th as well. <laughs> on the question of pets mount in fights now it's not expected to put them back because of a legibility issue it overloaded maps and we can't really 
we had to go creature mode, but we don't want to force you to go creature mode to be able to play, so we've removed that. Uh, changing the initiative order within a team. We've mentioned that not long ago, uh, while talking about ergonomic changes for multi-account and things like that, we don't really want to do that. It goes against maybe even the initiative stat itself, so it's... It, we leave that to you and your gear in order to manage things of this nature. So we don't have any expectation to change initiative manually. Nothing like that. F two questions. First, was the history of sale of uh, markets. So we've made a technical change in September to be able to bring this change. If the planets align on the very first quarter of next year, you will have, or you will have a... Um, a panel to follow all history of all sales you've done. <laughs> oh, wow. I've seen people ask this question. When are you going to fix the Temporis potions? Yes, mine is still broken. We've made a an update in June. And I update you to go towards support so they fix yours as well. There's a question that I want to take. Even though it is a spoil for what is coming. It's a good spoil. It's the question of... The question was... With Unity Arrival, will we have a one maintenance every Tuesday? We've teased it a little bit earlier. We called it the TGV, the turbo transfer of high speed. Globally, right now, if we have a maintenance every Tuesday. The last thing, well, the reason why we had one was that we had to do character transfer. So we wanted for once to go from server A, B, whatever. It was one of the last elements that we had to do manually every Tuesday. So it meant that we had to do. With the team, the server team that has giga worked, we, had, we were able to remove this thing. So now we can do real-time transfers. What? What? <laughs> this is crazy. Three seconds. You relog. You're already on the new server, which is nuts. This is very cool. So if we have this, that means maintenances are not necessary. They become necessary at the point where we will still need them when we have to purge data uh, server side. But it is really an infrastructural question, which means over the long term, the game will be able to have one maintenance every month, every two weeks, every three weeks. We will have to see and evaluate the amount of data that we generate over periods of time and see when we need to clean and tidy and purge. So potentially over the term, we won't have a maintenance every Tuesday. Oh, let's go. Alan is not going to like that. So generally in terms of production, patch, way of working, way, it's not nothing. It's not trivial. It is a big change that will be incredibly cool, that will uh, please the game itself. I'm teasing a lot of things, but there's a lot more details to this, knowing very well that we will communicate soon. This pleases us, because we've done lives that were disgusting, if I can say. Not our quality as producer, but the lives themselves were not easy towards the end of the year. And I rem if you remember, um, We've made massive projects and worked a lot on those and made big strides so we don't have to do this stuff anymore. <laughs> so we will make these servers available to you. Transfers immediate. So th these are things that we started a year ago and we are finally seeing the end of the tunnel. What we're saying internally, fuck, we finally can give you weeks without maintenance. It's a big accomplishment and thank you very much. Big bravo to the team who has made it possible. Will the guild system be reworked for Unity? We will go back on this in Unity, uh, in a future uh, live and uh, post. The system, the guild system, we're not going to lie to you. I've mentioned this before. Uh, the accessibility of paddocks on the new servers it is one of the big questions. So I'm not going to give you details now, but yes, there are humongous modifications that were made in guilds. For example, <coughs> create a guild will be much more simpler on... Uh, on the new servers and also on the old ones because of course everyone benefits from these changes but the creation will be more simplified you won't necessarily need to wait for miners to get to a certain level to get the there are things like this that are coming soon in a few weeks we'll be able to give you a lot more detail about these changes but not today yeah i've got the time to add four more questions and Lorco interjected he picked the question multi-accounting uh, options will also be 
available for mono accounters. If you're grouped up with multiple people, these are optimizations for group more than multi accounting. Maybe we've named them wrongly, but if you're in a mono account server, you will benefit from those as well. Another question. A fifth question. <laughs> will there be an epic, heroic kind of uh, server for the end of the year? No. Sad. The current optimization that we have does not allow us to have a server like that. Yes, Jay. <laughs> the maintenance. Why is it? Why does it start at eight? Oh, you have to know that that's when the least amount of players uh, are uh, available on the server. If we do it at four p.m., it will annoy a lot more people, so we do it early. Fusion of existing servers. Now, we can't really expect, it will uh, depend on the evolution of the player base. There is no expected fusion as it stands for current servers. On the bugs that are still available on, uh, that we still see on uh, Unity, uh, like the interfaces and things like that. Over the next few weeks, as we've said with Lorco, polishing, debugging, working on interfaces, a lot of them will be corrected. And last question, maybe I will spoil again. We'll go back to Lorco. We've mentioned heads. Can we talk about the buddies maybe? Shram, in particular, some people have noted that you have two different buddies. Effectively, as we've said, you will have multiple new buddies, so you can pick as a Shram if you want it to be skeletal or not. Sadida, you want it to be hairy or not. You will have a multitude of buddies to choose from, which is exciting. Now that we've mentioned this, let's talk about dates that again. It will be for the beginning of the year. It won't be available for the release, but it will be available for the next so Shram, for example, won't be available on the third. We've seen we've seen this on forum post a few. You know, it will not be available on the creation interface. It will be custom that you will be able to acquire later on. But that will arrive, as I think, uh, post release. As I said. Uh, another question about our favorite cheese. What? <laughs> we talked about it last week. <laughs> What's our favorite cheese? Uh, we've talked about it last week. I don't have any more questions in stack. The animations, we haven't progressed in animations, individual animations for spells and things like that. We're not right. Again, I'd love for us to progress on these. They're so voluminous as a project. There's so many things to pass. We cannot prioritize it with the amount of bugs we have now to sort out. We need to improve and better and perfect the quality of the game before we go and look at animations and things. There's very little chance that we will have time to go over these by the 3rd of December, but it's still in our list. Yeah. There are two or three questions that were addressed to me, but I couldn't read all of them. Uh, there was one about day-night. Effectively, day-night. It's not for now. Oh, There's so many things that we can do now, but to find the time, uh, weather system, day-night. If we could do something cool with it later, oh, I would love to have something like that for the, yeah, in the game, over the long term. Cut. A machina under the snow, if you remember. Uh, there were constraints, if you remember, the machina that you've known. We had to do all NPCs, redo them, relink them, and then uh, it was it was it was a horror of a project to to recopy this mode for Christmas would be cool. It was a replacement for a Christmas Island at the time. It would take us less time to redo uh, Christmas Islands for two for two point zero, but it was stressful and it was horrible as a project, and we don't want to go back there again. So why not go back over things like that? Do events, momentary, temporary events, and things like that in the future. Twentieth class for the twenty year? No, no, that is not happening. No, no, we thought about it a lot actually. <laughs> a twentieth class for the twenty year anniversary. We've thought about it a lot, but we thought. The porting was enough already without creating more work for ourselves. <clears throat> ah, yeah, yeah. I'll take more questions. And this, I have seen it in the post that regrouped all the questions for this live. And I've seen it also in the chat here. The energy and how it works. We've discussed it, but for the time being, it will stay as it is. We have not planned any changes. It is linked vastly to many... Um, professions and it would create an imbalance a consequent imbalance we will rework energy at some point but not now 
initiative question, it will still be linked to vitality and uh, stats. It allows you to modulate if you want to start first or not. No, well, uh, Christmas Island will be available on the new servers like we mentioned in the last live. Zelor and Ekaflip, we're not going to present them today in the live, but we will have all the details on the change log tomorrow. Will there be achievements linked to the stats of the end of fight? Nope. The goal is for it to be interesting for you without it becoming uh, uh, so competitive because, oh, you finished this mob, uh, motherfucker, why did you do that? We shouldn't do things like that, but we don't want to give you the tools to be able to do things like that more easily. And the last topic, which is a question we have mentioned internally, uh, I've seen it mentioned here again, which was the question of the uh, download pre-download on the day of on the third it's not easy we haven't planned it we have other problematics to fix before that we need to ensure that we have a sufficiently good infrastructure to support the um uh the load asked by the uh, dl i don't know what that is and the other thing is it was an actual translation i want uh the launcher as well which is another team uh, a different team for us, so we are dependent on other teams whether they will be able to make it available before then or not. We don't want to give you weird things on the launcher where it allows you to download more than your hard drive is able. We don't want your PC to implode in the sense that it saturates and it continues to download at the level of writing the files, so we don't want that to happen. So the launcher, we're working on that. We prefer to better the launcher side first before we can put a pre-download because it's not something that we've ever done and uh, uh and camera side we've never done that so uh we we'd rather give you a successful launch on the third than try and do something that we've never done before and then break the game we need to solution find solutions to the problems launcher side before we try and attempt anything like that i saw a question it was not in uninteresting but it was about the fact of being able to change the, the templates oh the uh, interface templates creates a sort of ensemble a shortcut for them it's something that we could do we don't have we have not thought about that but we could definitely be something that we'd, we could do question about the tactical mode why did you remove the tactical mode it was one of the goals of the portion of Unity is to make maps more immersive like that. It was one of the points of the porting. We paid attention to it during all the phases. We've made some modifications from the first weeks of the beta. So that it is as agreeable and pleasant for you to play in as possible. But it is the base tenant of the porting to enhance. Uh, I, I understand that it makes farming less speedy or something like that but there's a part of the community that does not like these modifications because of farming and speed and things like that i can't promise you that we will go back on this we will see how uh, the client and everything handles it but there's no intention to go back and make it available i've seen a question about foganauts and it's not our top priority animation side for the foganaut steamer uh, because we are uh, we work in classes the idols and things like that. We don't want to go back over the animation. As we have more it functions, it's functional. You have animations, you're doing things. We don't really want to prioritize that now. So you're stuck with what you have, essentially. <laughs> the artistic direction, do you have anything that is planned for next year? The rework of the artistic direction, nope, next year. They're picking questions from chat. Koto. All the dev clients love. Would I be able to have a hat, a dark Vlad animated hat? Uh, it, the difficulty is technical. It's uh, it's always technical. If you have three hundred people on the same map with animated hats, the feature could work right now. We could implement it, and it works. But it's performance that is really problematic here. We will talk about this uh, next week with the modifications that are coming. We'll give you further details about this. I say, yeah, but, but two, in two weeks on the fifth live. We, no, we don't expect to bring voices or voice chat or voice emotes. We have a uh, pass that is being doing right now, a change. 
uh, a sort of audio reaction to uh, spells in particular from your characters, but to give the NPCs voices and things like that. No, it's not happening. Any bots? News on bots? Again, ah, yeah, yeah. It's complicated to answer because the more we answer, the more we give them information. But generally, there's really there's loads of things that are happening in the background the there's a lot of things that we're implementing in the beta right now but i can tell you one thing there's a oh there's uh some planned band waves for those of you the wow what what is that melon what, 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 what? something ladder so some people have been having fun Playing around with something in the battle right now, and they're all getting a definitive ban. What was that? What was that, Jay? So there are things that we're continuing to get better on in the background. Anti-botting. There's loads of things that we've passed recently in the background. But what is melon loader? What is that? What is melon loader? Just to explain to you what that is, essentially. It's a uh, software that allows you to see how a game is made in the background using Unity. And loads of games that exist with unity so it allows you essentially to try and add features like no animation and things like that that we don't like with the project so for those of you who have enjoyed playing with this i am warning you it's definitive ban no don't go on things like that and it's not difficult for us to detect it's instant whatever you manage to configure and do with it it works well. It won't work well. Yeah, you said it works now. It won't work very well with you when you've complimented permanently the band. There will not be any discussion. Watermelon loader is... That is a... <laughs> it's a troll. It's a troll, of course. <laughs> it's a troll, of course. It answers the question that somebody asked, why don't we use... Uh, the facilities that Unity allows the tools to make new content. It would be making bots. You're modifying the client. Yeah, no, we don't want that. No, we're not going to let you make your own tools. No, that's nuts. <laughs> Some people are asking them to let them hack. Right. One last question each. Yeah, I'm seeing questions just uh sort of uh, loop back to the stuff we've had there. Uh, I'll take one last. We've talked about it during the last live. I can't remember exactly which one with Papino, certainly. Um, during the 5th of November, we will present new modifications that we will bring for quests so they're easier to follow. But there's also tools that have been developed by certain, cer some of you that let you create a little window to help you, like Ganymede and stuff that we've spoken to recently. And that we said, this is tolerated, it's allowed, it's okay for you to have that. It can help you follow quests easier rather than switch uh, between Dofus Polynoop and your uh, game client. We're conscious that there are some quests that are not easy to follow. Some areas where we don't know where to go and look and most people will just not even look, they just go to Dofus Polynoop. So for tools like that, it's all right for you to use tools like that. Again, as, with, as ever with external tools, be careful where it comes from. Make sure it is sh secure stuff for yourself and for your account. <laughs> oh no, I've missed a good question that one though. So it's not gonna be that one, sad. I'm seeing a lot of questions that we've already answered in the live, yeah, so. Go back and rework. Rework of the tool fab. <laughs> <laughs> There will be some new additions uh, with the end of year. New attraction roleplay. La Mayosh it's called. Oh, La Mayosh. I don't know why I said it like that. I, I like that. I like that you said that. I like it. I've seen a question and I've seen it pass. It's the uh, cinematics. Oh, is there a rework? We've talked about it recently. We don't really want to go back and rework now. We want to get them out. Get Do without them. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now that we're in the future, we've, we've said that in the future we will look at them and... But now that we are in the future, we've talked about that. No, no, no. They're too heavy in the way they were designed uh, in the past. And sadly, they are coming to a disappearance rather than any sort of viable. Aside from the intro cinematic, 
which will stay but to go um you know when you get into an area the cinematic with the bosses and things like that sadly it's something that is has not been standardized in the way we've made them when you go okay uh, you get into Takasha and you see the anime like what's going on yeah yeah Takasha they all unanimously love the Takasha so cosmetics what cosmetics in the major interface is a question what it would be crazy but I don't know uh, it's a question that we note for the long term it would be complex to implement the possibility to have oh the market embedded in the major interface so you can just buy them without having to go out and interact with it it's heavy <clears throat> There, there has to be lots of optimizations. For example, if there's a cooperative craft, how do you manage who buys from which wallet? Do you take the? It's quite. It will create. It will generate a massive amount of conflicts tech-wise. It's possible over the long term, but holy smokes! <laughs> His solution was: you buy a second screen and you put everything on it. And that's it. You're solved. Problem solved. <laughs> Koto, one last question maybe for you or not? Uh, sure, why not? You're not obliged or... Or a dance. <laughs> you can place an order or a little dance for uh, Thank goodness he's gone with the question rather than the dances. Oof, he's spotted. Oh, Dragon Turkey. <laughs> Equip in multiple mounts at the same time. One above your head, one under you, and then you go with all the... <sighs> Sadly, right now, you're not able... We've mentioned that it's not practical to have multiple mounts e equipped and switch between them. It's not practical. It's not necessarily a tech thing, but it's something that we've talked with lack about it. There might be modifications about this in the future, but... Optimization of RAM and client as an interrogation mark, as a big question, it's so vague, you need to be more specific. What do you mean by that? Right. Oh, here's a question for you. Attitudes. It's a bit technical because we have a technical problematic here at this level. It's a... Yeah. Uh, the uh, Those animations and attitude are, the attitude are incredibly heavy to have them in better to retrieve them have them load it's so consuming so when somebody comes into a map and you load all the emotes that you have all the animations that you have so that when you do this when you don't have it we had to look at all the emotes in the game and you end up having to load 15 emotes of dragon 150 megabytes of emotes for absolutely nothing so this is the optimization is to have a tool in parallel of the client and to see when you do this, do you retrieve the data or do you have it preloaded already? It's it's a big work. We have loads of tools with Unity that will allow us to do this uh, in parallel without having to load things. And generally speaking, the this is the summary of it. Why did we do this? Is there any reason to do this? Uh, they're getting too technical. One technical question I've seen multiple times. One last question. Last, absolutely. At the level of RAM consumption of the client, the desire here is one client is one gigabytes is the desired. Why, why is this? Why can't we have one gigabyte? Well, because we have so many things in memory. All the data of the game, all the maps, all the adjacent maps, all the spells, all the animations. 250 megabytes just from the adjacent maps. Concretely, is you have maps, characters, equipment, uh, potentially all the data of the game. If you have opened the bestiary, then you have the pictures of pretty much everything. In it. The game is humongous that the minimum of to not be doing much in the game already takes massive amount. We try for it not to be violent, but again, you have the Unity engine that takes some space. You have an, an, enormous, an, an enormous library of code. On a very normal small game, yes, something that you make one year, you could limit it to 100 megabytes. But now we're so big the game, six, seven hundred megabytes, just the game loaded up. 
and we see it again when you're in the character selection you are at 1.5 you're at 600 oh wow you're 600 megabytes at the creation of the character because you haven't loaded the data the game data but the moment you get into the game it brings everything and then boom 1.5 and it's not just the map you're in, it's also the corners of the map and how it connects to everything else. So there's a preloading that happens before you even change maps. We said that was the last one, clearly. Thank you all for having followed this live. We will finish on this, on this technical question. Koto, you finally managed to shine. <laughs> it pleases us. Thank you all for accompanying us, Loco, Koto. It pleases us to see new heads, new faces during these lives. Thank you all for following the lives. It was rich in information. And thank you all. Another uh, good luck to the creator to, to summarize this forum. Uh, the CM's good, good luck to the community manager. Uh, Grey Fox that is making videos on the enhancement of every single class. Lots of information was provided. I will tell you 5 November next live, which a live that will be incredibly consequent with the topic being the pre-registering for the porting of Unity, which I remind you will be the 3rd of December. I wish you all a very good end of the day. Goodbye.